welcome to Rolling Out's Design and Dialogue. I'm your host, Jackie Clark, and today I am chatting with CJ Wallace, the son of the late, great, notorious B.I.G. CJ, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Appreciate thank it. Of course. Thank you for taking the time. I know you have so much going on and I'm so excited to dive into that with you. So first thing I want to talk about is um, just doing some research on you, getting to know a little bit more about you. You are an entrepreneur or what I like to call a multi-mogul, someone who wears multiple hats and is in multiple projects. So can you tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey and why entrepreneurship? Man, uh, for me, it's it's always really been a dream to you know, have a team of people that I that I you know know and respect working with me and working to to help me bring my dreams to life. So um, I can't really say why, but it's it's I guess it's in my DNA. You know, my dad did the same thing. He had a team. Uh, my mom's always had a team around her, and yeah, I guess it's in my family genes. <laughs> and so, like on like music, is that a part of you as well? Like a huge part of who you are? I would say it it definitely lives in everything I do. You know. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm in a musician family, a creative family, if you would. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's in my DNA. Again, music definitely lives through, through everything I do. I've, I can't really, I, I can't see myself really enjoying life without music. Um, it's, it's definitely, you know, a part of my life in a huge way. I love that. And, you know, music is a part of, I think everyone uh, experiences music and, and views it in different ways and it, it, it's impactful to them. Obviously with who your father is and who your mother is, it's definitely a huge part of you. And then like you talked about the creative aspect of you know, how, you know, they create their own music, vi uh, their vibes to create their own music is obviously similar to how you create your brands. But I know we're young people, you know, right. and one thing that we want um, to talk that I, it's passionate for me, but one thing I definitely want to talk about is generational wealth. You know, a lot of our families, especially in our culture, we don't not always come from a generation generational wealth background. Um, right. so I want to know, you know, I know it's something important to you. So I wanted to ask you me about you the importance of building generational wealth for the black community yeah definitely so for me it really starts with family you know at the end of the day um i'm lucky to have my grandmother and my great grandmother in my life um uh, you know a lot of my family's from jamaica uh from my dad's side and yeah my great grandma actually is turning 100 this year so for me to, to be able to go to jamaica see her still talk to her um ask her you know all types of questions about what life's been like been able to see a lot of different changes in our world and, and live through it um, and to still have her health and, and you know, knowledge itself is really uh, impactful to me. So mm -hmm. to be able to build something like that for, for my grandkids, great grandkids one day um, and, and build on obviously this huge legacy that, that me and my sister have, um, it's it, it just makes it that much more impactful to me. So, yeah, when I when I start thinking about having kids, um, definitely want them to, to be aware of what they what they have at their disposal. And mm -hmm. I've been aware of that since I was 15 years old and been preparing for it and waiting for this moment. So to be able to, you know, work with companies like Lexus and, mm -hmm. you know, have these relationships with different brands like Michelin Ness, um, it's, it's amazing. It's beautiful. Uh, I'm definitely blessed and, you know, just really excited to share all these different ideas and stories that I have and that I've been thinking about since I was, you know, in middle school, high school, yeah. I love that, and you know, um, speaking of Jamaica, my parent, my dad's from Jamaica, so big up, and I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's turning 100. I actually am fortunate enough, my dad's dad is 101, so wow. I'm very blessed um, to have him in my life, and you know, he used to work at the Ray and Nephew plant back in Jamaica, so wow. getting wow. from them is big, and I only have one grandparent left. The other one passed away um, three weeks ago, actually, so. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm blessed, but to your point with generational wealth, we now, at the time, you know, when we have these, our grandparents, our parents, um, you know, our, our grandparents, siblings around, now's the time to really talk to them, not just as this is my grandma, this is my grandpa, they're a human being, and really take right. the knowledge, because once they pass, that leaves with them, right? So I think right. it's so important to get that information out from them, understand who they their psyche was, who they were, and things that they've done to impart, and see how you could take that, and then kind of, you know, use it for your own life and legacy. Definitely, 100%. I love that.
so I also want to ask, so for young, for how, for us young people, how would someone start their journey with generational wealth? Because when I thought about it, when I was in my early twenties, I'm now 35. When I thought about it, I was kind of like, okay, you just think I got to be rich and I just got to make as much money. And that's it. Like, that's what I think right. a lot of us think from your, um, from your perspective, I would say, how would mm. someone go about starting a general waste, general wealth journey? Mm. That's a, that's a great question. And I feel like there's multiple ways you can really start. Mm. Um, you know, I'm lucky enough to, to, you know, have been born into something where, you know, I've, 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 there's still like certain amounts of funds that I can't touch until I'm like 35. So like, you know, that type of planning and, and structure has been placed into my life since before I was, you know, even thought of. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that type of thinking, like thinking about 50 years from now, 30 years from now, um, and, and thinking about, you know, I know a lot of young people that have kids and, you know, aren't really thinking about, you know, their future um, the way they should be. And I'm just blessed that, that, my mom and, and my grandma were, were thinking that way. And yeah, I mean, there's so many different ways you can think about building building wealth and even just getting on the ground floor of specific ideas. You know, mm. we, we've always talked about, you know, just have, I've always talked about having a fashion brand, and building lifestyle brands and stuff like that. I feel like if, you, if you're taking your brand seriously, you never know where it can be. You know, there's, there's mm. a lot of the brand kit that I'm wearing right now, you know, Shout out to Ronnie. He's he's built something that's huge that started from an idea. So, you know, it's it's small ideas like that that people can definitely just keep pushing and you never know where it can go. I love that. I love that you were th talking about thinking of the future because I remember my dad always telling my sister and I, you know, save money. Think of your kids. I have my sister and I have no kids. Um, but it's one of those things. It's like, you know, you we you you, got, you start young, you get these jobs and you're like, okay, cool. You're just going to spend, but you really don't realize until you start getting older. Wow. I wasted a lot of money or wow. I wish I could right. save. So I think one of the biggest things for those listening is the best way to start with generational wealth is think about how you want your future to be, how you want it to impact your children. And then think about the small steps you can do now that your future self will thank you for later. And then you talked about brands and fashion. I love that. So a lot of people don't know before I fell into this whole PR space, I actually went to school to be a fashion designer. So I know how to sew. I want to be a bridal designer living my best Disney princess life, but life happens. So <laughs> here we are. So when it talks, when you talk about brands, I know you, you're you the founder of um, Think Big. So, uh, uh, and then Frank White. So can you talk to me a little bit about those both ventures? Because they're both different like yeah. Frank White's fashion, you know, the other one's more um, come think big is more cannabis. So talk to me about those ventures and how you came up. Yeah. With them. Yeah. So for me, you know, can it really all starts with cannabis for me? Um, really, when I was growing up, um, obviously seeing my parents use cannabis in different ways. And, you know, I was I was a curious kid. I asked <laughs> a lot of questions. Um, I'm like, why do you, why do you guys smoke in the studio? Like, why is this always the thing to do? And my mom was very honest with me. She told me like, this is what helps me tap into my creative ability. Um, it just helps me stay calm when I'm in the studio. Um, it keeps me creative. Yeah, like it was just always the creative tool. We at Frank White we call it the the <laughs> we call it, we call it the ultimate ghostwriter because it's <laughs> on every album, but it doesn't get any credit. So, you know, cannabis is really the, the ultimate ghostwriter. That's what we call it. But um, yeah, man, it, it starts for me at, like, at an early age. And I didn't uh, actually use cannabis until much later in high school. But I, you know, growing up with, with my youngest brother who was born with autism, my mom um, never wanted to use pharmaceutical drugs or anything to, to help treat him. So CBD was always like one of the first options. Um, he was born with autism. Like, I think he was diagnosed at two years old, two or three years old. And yeah, they, they suggested Ritalin and different stuff like that. And my mom was just always against that. So CBD was like the first thing. And we saw a lot of uh, positive, you know, responses from him. And, you know, my brother's 15 now and he's, you know, talking and saying all types of words and just he comprehends much differently. But, yeah, the, the autism spectrum, like they say, it's a, it's a spectrum. So, you know, he's much different and everybody's case is different. But CBD definitely was something grateful for him. And, you know, I used to always wonder why we didn't create our own products. And, 
you know, it wasn't until I was probably 21, 22 years old when we, I really sat down with my dad and I'm like, we should really, you know, start creating our own products. Let's, let's come up with a brand and think big was always a name that I loved. And Frank White was really something that, um, I always wanted to use on a, on a more creative side. So hmm. think big was really, really now it's the, I look at it more as the, the social justice arm of, of all of my businesses. Eventually it would be like, uh, the nonprofit per se. Um, and, and Frank White, you know, we, we do cannabis products with Frank White. We do fashion apparel, um, content, uh, developing different TV ideas, uh, potential documentary ideas. We do a lot of different stuff at Frank White. So everything creative is Frank White. And then everything we do like on a social justice side uh, and just for legalization of cannabis stuff, that's all they think. Yeah. I love that. I really thank you for breaking that down. I really I, I love the idea of think big as well. You know, you're not limiting yourself. You know, you're telling you're encouraging people to think beyond the scope. And um, I love the talk about cannabis in that way, because, you know, for so long, it's been uh, there's such a negative connotation behind cannabis. And people exactly. don't talk much about the positive aspects of how it can help with CBD and how it can help with other um, other things, cancer um, and a lot right. of things. So thank you for shedding um, a light on that. And then you talked about Frank White was just a name you always loved. Where did that come from? Like, I'm I trying to, am I yeah. grandparent name? It was just. Yeah, yeah. So if a lot of people don't know this, but Frank White was actually one of my dad's aliases. And, oh. you know, if if a lot of people uh, don't know this, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's really crazy because the movie uh, The King of New York is mm -hmm. starring Christopher Walken. Um, Christopher Walken plays Frank White. And he was like, you know, the ultimate mob boss, the, the the bad guy, you know, the the guy. He was just the guy. And, you know, my dad took that name and made it like his, his alias uh in rap and yeah, he was only called that whenever he was, you know, whenever he was rapping and that was like his alter ego as a rapper. So yeah, it's it's really cool to, that I'm I'm able to tell that story, you know, through through the merchandise and yeah, through, that's through cool. I never knew stuff. that. Yeah, yeah I, a lot of people don't. It's never, really crazy. Never knew that. So I love that. I love that you're sharing that side of his story as well. Um, so you know, I wanted to ask you, like, how do you with your brands and through mm -hmm. your creative design and uh, thought process, how do you pl plan to impact your the culture, the urban, the black culture, the music culture in general? Yeah, um, with a lot of different ideas uh, and collaborations. So. We're really, really excited to announce that we're doing a collaboration with Lexus, yeah. the car company. Yeah, so that's definitely huge, um, definitely huge for, for our culture. Obviously, something that my dad would have would have aspired for. You know, he talked about Lexus, and he was a huge fan of Lexus. He drove a Lexus, mm -hmm. and you know, he mentioned it on record. So, it's it's a full circle moment for me to actually work with them. Um, they're doing, they're bringing out the all new LX 600 that's coming out. Um, it's actually out, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, phasing out throughout the year. Um, we did a little mini documentary with them, um, just talking about the impact of legacy and how they're two iconic brands coming together, um, just celebrating luxury and, and that they've been able to stand the test of time and the impact on hip hop, um, mm -hmm. as a, being part of black culture and, now being celebrated as like the biggest genre in the world, if you want to argue about it. So, yeah, it's 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 really crazy just being able to work with them. And you know, my dad loves Lexus, so this is a family brand, and two iconic family brands coming together is is pretty awesome. So, I really love that. I could, and I was going to ask you about that collaboration. What, like, how if you don't mind, and if you can share, how in depth were you in the collaboration process with the new Lexus or any of the products? How how much involvement did you have? Yeah, I'm, I'm very involved. I like to be involved. Um, <laughs> I, I definitely was, was you know, hands-on throughout this process, um, along with our lead creative designer, Kyrie. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's really awesome to, to be able to take part in this and have your ideas shared and, you know, even the bad ideas. You know, we I, I, like, I like to just be able to say everything and, you know, be able to share my ideas so it was it was really fun to actually have input we, we did a lot of different cool things so some merch and, and car wrap design ideas nfts and stuff so 
it's a lot of cool stuff that's coming. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I don't know much about the NFT space. My cousin was trying to show me and I'm just like, I can't wrap my head around it, but I know it's huge <laughs> in general. Um, but what I loved is, you know, when you talked about you were really heavily involved, that goes back to a question I want to ask you in regards to ownership as a creative. Why and how is it important? Why is it important for creatives, designers, you know, business people to have ownership over their projects? especially from the music mm. school. Like, you know, I've always heard, you know, artists, I can't sing to save my life, but I've always heard artists talk about they want to have ownership over their records or their projects. Why is it important from your perspective? I think it's important because you you never really know what the value of of those records can be one day. Um, yeah, like owning owning the masters, you know, they talk about that being a huge, a huge piece of, you know, every artist's, uh, their artistry in general, you know, owning your masters is, is everything. So that's, yeah, that goes without saying, you know, a lot of the greats make sure that they get their masters and, you know, ownership of, of what you create is, is everything. So mm. I feel like that's, that's very important nowadays, especially now, you know, in being able to record yourself in this world that we're in and all the new information that's out there. Yeah. You know, I wish a lot of the, I wish all, all this stuff was relevant back then. You know, it would be it would be great for the artists. Definitely. Life would definitely be a lot different if we had that information and such right. back then. Um, so I know this year would be your father's 50th birthday. So yeah. I know that's definitely a big uh, milestone and monumental stone in your family. If you don't mind, how do you guys plan on celebrating? If you're allowed to share, if you want to share. Oh, no, definitely. Definitely allowed to share. Definitely can't wait to, uh, you know, until everybody sees what we're doing this year. But there's a lot of different stuff going on. Obviously, the Lexus collab is going to coincide with my dad's 50th birthday. That was a huge piece of, of everything we were doing, uh, just talking about 50 years of, of, of being and, and mm -hmm. Lexus, you know, also sort of coming into relevancy around the same time as my dad started rapping. Yeah. So that was a huge, you know, a huge connection there. Uh, and just being able to, work again, work with Lexus was probably the coolest thing that that I could have done this year um, but that's that's definitely something I know my dad would have been proud of and you know we're, we're also doing some really cool stuff this week uh, here in New York they're doing a, a lighting ceremony at the Empire State Building uh, to honor my dad that's gonna be really cool um, going up to actually light it up it's, it's cr I didn't even know that they did that uh, like it made it a thing but yeah that's gonna be cool uh, little Kim's having a birthday dinner. Uh, for my dad, honoring him 50, 50th birthday dinner. So that's going to be nice. Mm -hmm. um, and just a bunch of other stuff out here. It's, it's New York. So they're, they're always doing cool stuff to celebrate him. Um, me and my sister, obviously, are just going to, you know, hang out, see all the family, and, mm -hmm. and just do what we always do, celebrate, celebrate big. I love that. I, I love that so much. And I want to ask you, how is it when, you know, people know that this is your dad and they come to you, how, how is it that you get to receive the love that, you know, he would have received well, if Wally was still here? How is that for you? Yeah. For, I mean, it's, it's always been a blessing, you know, to be able to, to continue the legacy, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's something that I'm never going to get tired of at the end of the day. You know, I, I can't really, be mad or upset when people come up to me and ask for pictures and stuff because you know I'm, I'm all that's left really me and my sister you know but the fact that we share the same name uh, look similar you know and, and come from you know my mom and my dad the fact that i come from these two is just you know some people just really you know find joy in being able to to talk about it and take pictures and all that so i i love it I, i'm just very blessed to actually be able to you know do what I want in life and, and create brands like Frank White and Think Big and, and work with really dope people and, and, you know, try to change the world one day. So that's, that's really all that I, I, you can ask for for me. I, I love it. I completely understand like the legacy piece. My dad's actually an artist and uh, he's a, you know, major artist here in Canada, you know, a couple things worldwide. So it's interesting when people recognize that this is my dad, it's nice to be able to do that. But the question I've gotten asked and I wanted to ask you, what is your personal legacy? What do you plan to leave behind outside of who your father and your mother are? Because they're, that's, they have their legacy and yes, you're their child, but what does CJ Wallace want his legacy to be? Man, I guess I just want, I want my legacy to be, you know, everlasting at the end of the day. I definitely want, you know, 
I want my kids to to be proud of who their dad is. I want my kids to, you know, the same as me. You know, I get to honor my dad every day. Uh, you know, not a day goes by where I don't think about him. And I want, I guess, I want that same effect. Um, you know, obviously, I want to do it in my own way. Uh, you know, my dad was one of the greatest poets, writers, rappers. You know, artists. Um, apparently, he was a great. drawer designer he could he, he was a great graffiti artist apparently uh you know i'm learning so much about him and i, I guess i just want to have a similar you know uh never ending titles as him like he was like you said a multi-mogul uh, he was he was really a genius at the end of the day so i guess i just want to be great at everything that i do yeah I really, really, really love that. And you, we always want to be, you know, the best that we can be within this lifespan of what we have. Um, so yeah. I want to ask you a fun question, something kind of like outside of the box. Uh, what is your dad's favorite song and why? What is one of your dad's favorite songs? Mm. And you can only choose one. Man, it changes every day. Um, it literally, yeah, like it changes every day. But I, if I'm feeling one, Right now, it's probably it's probably everyday struggle. It's probably everyday struggle. That's like one of those those really impactful ones for me. So, okay, yeah. I like that. Mine would be "Sky's the Limit." I definitely, definitely resonate with that one a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I really, really do like that one. So I'm so excited that we had the chance to actually chit chat. So I do want to know, outside of you know Lexus, I know there's. <laughs> Or little rumors. There's a little mini documentary. Can you share a little bit about that? I know some stuff will yeah. come out, but let me know more about that. Yeah. So you know, for for us and and for this whole Lexus collaboration, it was really just about uplifting up, uplifting generations uh, in the Black community and, and inspiring achievement, building wealth in the Black community. You know, just talking about those stories that really you know, don't get talked about often, you know, stories like my father's, um, stories like, you know, the immigrant story coming from nothing and, and really building something and, you know, just being proud of where you come from. And for my daddy came from Brooklyn. Uh, well, I got to drive the, the LX all around Brooklyn and, and really, you know, show people where we come from. And I love being in Brooklyn. And so being able to shoot on St. On St. James and Fulton, um, Being able to go to my dad's barber shop, talk to one of his barbers, um, it was it's a lot of cool stuff in there, man. It was it was really really beautiful. Um, we shot some of it on film. We did my film nerd something out. It means it was like really cool to be able to you know have a really dope team to shoot with. Um, a lot of different shots uh, just throughout the day. It was fun. I hadn't been on a set in a while, so it just it just really it felt really good to be back in that mode. And, to be doing it with the Lexus team was just like unbelievable. And to be able to drive the Lexus is such a nice car. I can't wait. They, they talk about, I'm going to get one in September. So I'm really you. looking forward to it. Yeah. You know, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's, it's really nice. It's a beautiful car, like beautiful car. So I, I can't wait. I, I just can't wait to, to be able to take pictures in it and, you know, obviously drive safe, but yeah, I can't wait to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful that. car. Uh, you talked about being on set. You haven't been on set in a while. Are we going to get back into any movies, any films? Is that a different venture for you? What is what is next for you outside of these projects? What else is like, what are you working on? Oh, man. You know, we, we got a lot of different ideas. Um, huge year. So basically this year, uh, celebrating the 25th anniversary of uh, Life After Death, the album, 25th anniversary uh, since my father's passing. Um It's my 25th birthday was uh, in October this past year. So it's a lot of different celebrations happening in one year. My dad turning 50, uh, my great my great grandma's turning 100 in July, and my grandma turned 75 in February. So it all lined up 25, 50, 75, 100 yeah. all this year. So the numbers lined up this year, which is just crazy. So we're doing a lot of different, um, you know, just activations and, different type of ways to celebrate each of these uh, each of these milestones. So this is a huge year. Uh, it, it all started start to start it off with Lexus and to be, you know, celebrating my dad's 50th birthday with Lexus. It just kind of makes everything that much better. And uh, proceeds from the, the collaboration we're doing with Lexus are going to be going uh, 
from the merchandise we're doing with Lexus and Complex Land, proceeds of those will be going to the Youth Design Center. So that's really cool. been able being able to give back to the kids is always you know a huge piece of everything we do with Frank White. So that's like I was just really happy that we were able to do that too and make that a part of this whole thing. I love all this. The numbers. I'm a big numbers. One, one, one. All those type of things. So loving, <laughs> seeing the 25. Happy birthday for the 25th. I know it was October, but blessings to you. I'm Thank glad you. to see all that as well. So before we wrap this up, um, how can people connect with you online or connect with Frank White? And you know, the Come Think Big. How can they find you on social? Yeah. So my socials at C Jordan Wallace. Uh, it'll pop up wherever. And uh, to follow Frank White at Frank White Co. And think big, come think big. Um, that's really it. And I think we're on Twitter and, and all that stuff too. So, yeah. Amazing. I'll make sure to drop all that so everybody has that so they can get to it. But thank you so much for your time. I'm so excited for everything that you're doing. Congratulations on just everything. A happy birthday to your father as well. I want to say that on the records. But just congratulations and thank you for so much for being here today. Thank you so much, Jackie. Had a great time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. So this was Jackie Clark. You were in for Design and Dialogue with my special guest, CJ Wallace. Stay tuned for more. Ciao. Peace.